What's going on everybody? My name's Noah, welcome to Madison Angling, and if you clicked on this video, you probably have a weird kind of phantom overheat issue with your outboard, more specifically your Optimax. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. I've got a 250 Pro XS, uh, three liter Optimax that had a really weird cooling issue. Uh, it had a couple other tune-up things that I needed to do. I just passed the 600 hour mark. So I'm gonna touch on those and then kind of show you guys how I diagnosed the uh, poppet valve as being the reason my motor was overheating even though it was circulating water and peeing. There was water coming out of the telltale, good water pressure, but my motor was overheating. It wasn't getting enough motor. So we're gonna dive in here. I'm gonna show you guys why that happened, how we diagnosed it, how to fix it, and uh, hopefully keep you on the water and keep you from melting your motor down. So I do wanna preface this video by telling you guys I am not a certified mercury or marine mechanic. I just like to wrench on my own stuff. Most of these motors are incredibly simple and easy to work on uh, if you know the basics of how an engine works and specifically how an outboard works. So I am not a mechanic, but um, overall fairly mechanically inclined. I'm very comfortable wrenching on motors and uh, this is actually a very easy thing to diagnose and a very easy thing to fix. You can do it with basic hand tools. It doesn't take very long. The parts are very inexpensive and it could save you a lot of time and aggravation. All right, I'm gonna spin you guys around here. We're gonna look at the motor and kind of start with what I was working on initially. So if we look at this uh, top cowling here, this uh, basically the shroud, you can see there's a little hole right here by the warning label. That was caused by the pulley. I'll actually insert a little video on the left side of the screen here of this motor running. Um, I was actually getting the mo motor ready to put away, getting it winterized. And I took this cowling off and noticed that, you know, there's some wear here. There's all kinds of little pieces of plastic and crap all over, as well as oil. There was some oil that had been leaking, had kind of a phantom oil leak um, for the, the second half of the open water season here. And so I took this off, the motor was running, and I could actually see, like you can see here in the video, um, the compressor um, pulley is wobbling. It's loose, meaning that it is no good. Um, compressor failures and Optimaxes usually happen around the five, 600 hour mark from what I understand. Um, it's a fairly common issue, but it's a very easy fix. It's four bolts, uh, two water lines, your air hose, and uh, one sensor, a couple oil lines, actually three oil lines, and you're done. It's, it's about a 10, 15 minute job, really not that difficult to fix. So um, we put the new compressor on, got everything rigged up, motor fired right up, was running fine, running on the muffs. Uh, peeing, not awesome, but but peeing, and um, I went inside for a minute, came back out, overheat alarm was on, and I uh, went and shut the motor down. It got up to about 170 degrees, which shouldn't have hurt anything, um, but uh, it got hot, and so we shut it down, and uh, I figured, okay, the next logical thing, you know, going through easy stuff, knowing that the motor does circulate water, it does pee, um, thermostats. We have one on the port side, one on the starboard side, starboard side, sorry, words are hard, it's cold out today. Um, that's the next logical thing to check, right? Maybe the thermostats aren't opening properly. Um, I did have kind of an intermittent pee stream where it was kind of spraying every once in a while. It would, it would pee, you know, a solid stream and then psh, 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 psh. So I figured maybe the, you know, I've got a stuck thermostat or it's not opening all the way. There's air getting trapped in the heads. Something isn't getting through. So um, replace the thermostats, which is something you should probably do on a fairly regular basis, you know, every couple years or so. And um, threw everything together, fired it, same thing happened. We're, we're, we're still getting hot, but we're, we're circulating water. So the next logical thing would be your water pump. So I have here the old impeller and looking at it, you know, just giving it an inspection, it looks fine. There's really no cracks, dry rot, anything like that. However, over time, depending on how old this thing is, uh, and I've had this boat for a year, so I don't know when the last time this had been changed prior to me buying it. Um, even though the veins on your impeller look good, uh, there is the possibility that the rubber has weakened over time and it's not generating the water pressure that's needed to circulate water properly through the engine. So. I bought a rebuild kit, um, you know, dropped the lower unit, took that all apart, put a whole new water pump in it, the housing, everything, the entire water pump, reinstalled everything, um, fired the motor, motor pees, but I'm watching my temp gauge on my dash and it's climbing, climbing, climbing. And usually about 130 degrees is where these motors like to run. That's typically when the thermostats open. And I did uh, test my thermostats before installing them. 
uh, put them in some water, slowly raise the heat, watched it with a thermometer, and both of them opened right around 128 to 132 degrees, which is perfect, right in the acceptable range. So my, my motor's getting warm, 145, 150 degrees, hasn't sounded the alarm yet, but I got to 155. The motor is peeing and it's peeing cold water and I can feel the heads, you know, and the, and the side of the cylinders here are getting warm. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. All right, so we've got water circulating somehow through the system because you are getting water pressure coming out of the telltale. And I apologize, I live on kind of a busy street here, lots of, lots of vehicle noise. But uh, we have water coming through the system, it's coming out cold, but we're overheating, right? So something somewhere isn't letting water through. So the next thing we tried um, was the motor flush, which is actually located here. You can see we took the bottom cowling off here so we have access to everything. Um, your motor flush actually goes into this brass fitting right here that has a check valve inside of it. And when I hooked the hose up, nothing happened. It wasn't circulating water. So it's like, what the heck? So we tore this all apart, pulled this off, and it turns out the check valve in here was actually bad. Uh, which in itself is not a big deal, not a problem. Um, water just goes in to flow through to flush the motor through here. It does not come back out. Um, it, uh, this is not the reason for the failure, but I did catch this. For all I know, this motor has maybe never been flushed before. It's a freshwater motor. Um, so that is something that's going to be getting replaced as well. It might as well, since you're in here, make sure everything's working right. It's a very inexpensive part. It's like 30, 35 bucks for that check valve. So anyway, um, once we got that cleared, we got water flowing through the motor. We took the thermostats back off and water flows through the block perfectly, just fine. Um, what else did we do here? We actually ran water down through the, uh, the heads here um, where the housings for the thermostats are and water flowed down through the block, no problem. Absolutely perfect. So once we got this check valve out, water could flow free, th freely through here. When we flushed it, water went through the system, no problem. So we put everything back together thinking maybe we flushed some contaminants that may have been stuck inside of the passageways, which is worst case scenario. You have something blocking the actual water jacket, you know, the water passages in the, in the power head. Um, so we flushed the motor and um, put it back on the muff, started the motor. Um, we're still moving some water but the motor's getting warm, it's still getting warm. So uh, that led us to really the last part of this cooling system. So we have new thermostats that we know are functioning. We have a new water pump that we know has good water pressure. It's functioning perfectly. Um, as far as we're aware, there's no obstructions in the power head. Um, the next thing is this guy right here. And it's actually this piece right here. This is called a poppet valve and Poppet valves are kind of interesting, and it's, it, it's kind of fun thinking about this now, wondering how many motors have blown up because of this poppet valve. So this thing fits right here, and it mounts to the exhaust plate, which is this flat piece right here. So power head, exhaust plate that goes to the midsection of the motor, then your lower unit. So basically what a poppet valve does is it regulates the amount of water that is flowing into the motor based on the RPM range that the motor is running at. So obviously at low RPM, your motor doesn't need as much water to cool the system. At higher RPM, it needs more water to cool the system. You generate more heat, you need to cool it down. The reason you have a poppet valve is to prevent overcooling and obviously overheating. Overcooling on a motor, especially a two-stroke or any direct injection engine, but particularly a two-stroke, uh, is fouling. If you run too cold and you're overcooling, you run too rich and you foul out your spark plugs, you get excessive carbon buildup, your motor runs like crap. If you get too hot, your motor leans out and it blows up. So uh, this piece is probably honestly responsible for a lot of motors that people just wrote off as well. It leaned out, it was an injector problem, it was an air problem, it was a carburetor problem. Motor leaned out and it blew up. Well, it could have been this thing. Because when you're running across the lake, your alarm goes off and you go, oh crap, I'm overheating. And you look back and your motor's peeing perfectly fine. How many people over the years have just written that off as, oh, it's a bad sensor, run it. It's peeing, it's fine. And then 30 seconds later, you've got metal woodpeckers trying to get out of your power head. Um, I'm willing to bet that thing has caused a lot of catastrophic failures and a lot of outboards. And it's not just the Optimax, it's not the Pro XS, it's every outboard, every single outboard, even four strokes, have a poppet valve. So to, to diagnose what was happening, um, 
there is a water passage that goes up to the power head and then there's a passage right here that drops down to the exhaust. So the excess water at low RPM that you don't need to cool the motor is diverted by this valve and it's just a spring-loaded valve here. There's actually a little diaphragm inside of this, this aluminum housing here, but this valve um, diverts the extra water down through the exhaust, which is why you have water come out of your exhaust. And at higher RPM, the, the valve moves, it allows more water to flow through the power head, and, you know, life is good. So basically what happened was this valve got stuck and because it's, you know, it ties into the exhaust, you get, you know, it can get kind of sooty, kind of gross, you know, seals, bearings, I mean, any, any bearing surface or, um, you know, surface with a seal, I should say, um, wears over time. And it doesn't take much to clog one of these apparently. Uh, it doesn't take much to make this thing not function properly. So saltwater guys, make sure you're paying close attention to your poppet valve. And you guys are probably more aware of this issue than a lot of freshwater guys. So basically that valve was stuck, not allowing enough water to flow up through the power head. Instead, it was getting rerouted around up through the compressor line and out through here um, and not allowing enough water to get through here. But uh, that would make sense that I've never had an overheat issue because you know I where I fish, where I boat, I don't really spend a lot of time at low RPM. I don't have to go very far to get up on plane and take off. So at high speed, um, this thing's getting plenty of water. You've generated plenty of uh, you know intake pressure for the water pump. Um, never had an overheat problem with it. So that would make sense why it's happening at low RPMs. And I never you know never threw a code, never threw an alarm. Um, and it and it could have just happened to have happened at the same time. You know it just happened to get stuck, and I could have just been you know rolling on some borrowed time here. So that's pretty much it, guys. It's this uh, this guy, the poppet valve. Um, you know, I had to take the lower cowl to get up, get to this, you know, off the motor. Um, not a big deal. Four bolts pops off. It looks a lot more complicated than it is. It goes back together the way it comes apart. Um, but this is it. Uh, you can get a whole new assembly or you can just buy parts for this to rebuild it. I just ordered a whole new assembly. We're going to put a new, um, gasket in here, a new seal that sits right here. Um, there are some other videos showing you how to install this properly. Um, so there is a, you know, a water passage here, water passage here, and there's a lot of places this seal, this gasket in here, see if I can get this to zoom in. There's a gasket right in here. Um, there's a lot of ways you could drop that thing down into your exhaust plate and it's gone forever. So when you install this, um, take a screwdriver, you can use a dowel rod, something like that. Put the, uh, the gasket onto the screwdriver, push it all the way in, the screwdriver all the way in until you hear metal go tink. And then while maintaining pressure against the inside of the um, exhaust plate here, you know, reach in there and press this, um, press this gasket into place. That way, if you do accidentally push it into the exhaust plate, it's still hanging on the screwdriver. You can fish it back out and install it and you don't lose it. So just a quick little tip for you guys. All right, so how did we actually diagnose that it was in fact the poppet valve that was causing this? So. We knew that the thermostats work, our water pump worked, um, so we needed to figure out where, where else the water could be getting stuck, and uh, that ended up being the culprit. So what I actually did, uh, with the thermostats removed and the, the heads just open, letting water just flow out of them, I actually stuck a hose right in here and immediately could hear the air coming out through the, um, the uh, I guess, the water ports in the heads where the thermostats sit and sure enough water starts flowing through the heads perfectly so obviously this is the straight shot then from the water pump to the actual block to the actual power head so uh so what we did um and this is super redneck engineering but uh <laughs> it worked uh, i don't recommend bypassing this system uh permanently because you will overcool and potentially hurt your motor um is we took the pop it valve and you can see here you know the the valve and the spring fits inside of there but if you look at the outside of it it's pretty darn flat and there's still a gasket on there so we actually bolted this on um backwards and sealed this thing up so we're just letting water flow uninterrupted through our exhaust plate here and we started the motor <clears throat> motor warmed up and it got to about 142 and i told and i had a buddy here helping me and i told him hey don't let it get over 150 and once it hit 142, I actually um, 
heard the water start flowing through the thermostats down our, our cooling hoses and uh, the temp started to drop and it dropped down to about 130 right where it should be and we didn't run it too long we only ran it for a couple minutes and then the temp started dropping 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 over cooling right because there's there's no control over how much water's flowing through here now but we have you know warm water coming out of the telltale and we have uh, basically established that with the valve not in there the motor functions properly the cooling system's working um, so it's got to be the poppet valve and that's pretty much it you know this isn't a super technical video again i am not a certified marine mechanic or mercury mechanic but um, just doing some troubleshooting stuff that's the only other component in the cooling system that could be causing this and after doing a little bit of looking around I saw that there's very few videos documenting this, especially on the uh, Optimax 250. Um, it, it could happen on absolutely any outboard. In fact, there's inboards and stern drives that also have poppet valves for the same reason. It helps regulate the amount of water cooling the engine so you're not fouling or leaning out the engine uh, and blowing it up. So uh, fortunately, I caught all of this stuff before it became an issue. We got the new compressor on there, which is unrelated, but still you know, on that 600 hour mark, I put about 200 hours on this motor this year. Um, an expected thing that needed to be replaced and then these other things just happen to happen at the same time so start with the simple stuff thermostats water pump and if all else fails pop it valve that is basically the last part of your cooling system that could be failing um, and it's something that gets overlooked a lot it's a very simple thing it's very inexpensive and it could even be a part of your regular preventative maintenance regimen every few years or so basically Anytime I'm probably gonna put a impeller in my system, I'm probably gonna put a new poppet valve in there as well. Just to be safe, it's a 30, 35, $40 part depending on what motor you have. And it's just the peace of mind knowing that I'm not gonna lean my motor out and blow it up. So if your motor is peeing but getting hot at low RPM, that could very well be what's causing it. In fact, it's probably definitely what's causing it guys. So. Um, hopefully this saves people a little bit of aggravation. You know, this again could be preventative maintenance, something you never have to deal with because you just make it a part of your, um, your maintenance plan. Um, or if you're having weird overheat problems at low RPM, you know, water's moving, you're, you're peeing, but motor's getting hot, check your poppet valve. That's probably what it is. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this helped somebody somewhere. Leave some comments down below if you are a mechanic let me know how my, my diagnosis um, lines up with your diagnosis and any other experiences maybe you guys have with um, overheating, leaning your motor out, um, and this, this low RPM overheat stuff. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.